Hey boys and girls, we're going to continue with pumpkins today. I told you we're going to be reading a fiction book today. Fiction means it didn't really happen. It's not true. The book is called Too Many Pumpkins by Linda White, illustrated by Megan Lloyd. Too Many Pumpkins. Every year at springtime, Rebecca Estelle planted just enough seeds in her garden to grow vegetables for the long winter. She planted carrots and beans, tomatoes and peas, corns and rutabagas. She grew a little bit of everything except pumpkins. Rebecca Estelle hated pumpkins. When she was a little girl, money had been scarce. For an entire month, all there had been to eat were pumpkins. Baked pumpkins, steamed pumpkins, boiled pumpkins, stewed pumpkins, mashed pumpkins, rotten pumpkins, breakfast pumpkins, lunch pumpkins, dinner pumpkins, enough pumpkins. When things finally improved and there was more money to buy food, Rebecca Estelle decided she would never eat pumpkins again or even look at one, not ever. And she didn't until, oh, look, until one autumn day after Rebecca Estelle's hair had turned snowy white, she was raking the leaves that fell each fall from her black walnut tree, and her cat, Esmeralda, was scattering them just as quickly. All of a sudden, the pumpkin truck passed by. Oh, she heard it coming, and she knew what it was. It rumbled by at harvest time every year. She turned her back and concentrated on picking up the last fallen leaf. She managed to ignore the truck until, uh-oh, splat. An enormous pumpkin tumbled off the truck and smashed into slimy orange smithereens all over the edge of her yard. Come back here and get this pumpkin, she yelled. But the driver sped away. Look at her. How do you think she was feeling? Not very happy, I don't think. Okay. Here we see her. What is she going to do? Well, I won't touch it, Rebecca Estelle insisted, getting her shovel from the barn. And I won't look at it, she added, as she shoveled dirt on top of the pumpkin pieces. I won't think about the pumpkin ever, ever again, she declared, and she didn't, until uh -oh. spring, when Rebecca Estelle was admiring the new sprouts in her garden. She noticed Esmeralda playing in some big green leaves growing at the edge of the yard. How curious, she said, going over to inspect them. I didn't plant anything there. Then Rebecca Estelle remembered the pumpkin truck and the slimy pumpkin smithereens. Pumpkins, she cried in disgust. Come out of there, Esmeralda. I will not water those plants. I will not tend to them. I will ignore them and they will die. She picked up Esmeralda and stomped inside. But a week later, when Rebecca Esmeralda peered out her window, she saw that the vines had grown. Uh -oh. She tramped to the barn, got her garden tools, and went to work on the pumpkin vines. She cut and dug until not one was left growing. There, now there will be no pumpkins. She smiled and went back inside, but the next week, when she was weeding the garden, she noticed that the pumpkin vines had grown back. Rebecca Estelle marched inside and snapped the curtain shut. The only thing to do is ignore them. 
They won't grow if I don't take care of them, she muttered. So rain or shine, all spring and summer, she never looked out the front window. She used only the back door and never even glanced toward the vines. Neither did Esmeralda. <clears throat> Rebecca Estelle ignored the vines so well that in time she, in, she forgot why she wasn't using the front door until one autumn day when she and Esmeralda went to rake the leaves that fell each fall from the black walnut tree in front of the house. There she goes to rake those leaves from the front of the house. What do you think she's going to find? <gasps> Let's see what she finds. Uh-oh. Look at that. Pumpkins! Rebecca Estelle shrieked. Pumpkin vines had twined under the bushes, over the bird bath, through the porch rails, and onto the rocking chair. The entire yard was a sea of plump, round pumpkins. Rebecca Estelle could no longer ignore them. She plopped down on the pumpkin nearest her, putting her hands over her face. What will I ever do, Esmeralda, she cried. How will I get rid of all these pumpkins? She thought and she thought. Her mind went back to all the pumpkins she had eaten as a young girl, when pumpkins were the only food her family had. Look at all the pumpkins. In the tree, in the hammock, finds and finds of pumpkins. Well, we can't let them stay here, she told Esmeralda. Some people might need these pumpkins, and I suppose there are folks crazy enough to like them. We'll give them away, she marched off to get her wheelbarrow. Rebecca Estelle struggled to lift the first pumpkin, then the second, and then the third. She huffed and she puffed as she wheeled the loaded wheelbarrow into the lane. I'm too tired to deliver these heavy pumpkins now, Rebecca Estelle grumbled. She mopped her brow with her apron and wondered what to do next. Perhaps if I make them into pies, they will be easier to deliver. Such a nuisance. Look at all the pumpkins. Wow. You know they were heavy for her to pick up and put in that wheelbarrow. And it'll be hard to carry them in the wheelbarrow now. So, she went to work. She scooped the slimy seeds out of the pumpkins and cut away the shells. After she boiled the pumpkin meat, she mixed it with eggs, milk, sugar, flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves to make rich pies. Then Rebecca Estelle made pumpkin tarts, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin cakes, pumpkin bread, pumpkin pudding, pumpkin cookies, until, wow, look at all of those pumpkins. Until pumpkin dishes spilled out of every cupboard, every drawer and cubby hole, and the seeds were a mountain in the corner. Well, that's the first batch, Rebecca Estelle said, dusting her flowery hands. Now to deliver them. She put the wheelbarrow outside the kitchen door and loaded it with pumpkin treats. When it was full, just the thought of delivering all those pumpkin dishes made Rebecca Estelle tired. If only people would come get them, she said. Then she had an idea. Rebecca Estelle whirled around and hurried back into the house for a kitchen knife. This should get people to come, Rebecca Estelle cried. Okay, there she is. All of her goodies she's made. Wow, that was a real big hill of pumpkin seeds, wasn't it? What a mess that would be. Okay, she took her knife and sat in the middle of the pumpkin patch. She carved a smiling face on a nice round pumpkin, a scary snaggle toothed face on a tall, thin pumpkin, and boo on a short, squat pumpkin. She was so busy carving pumpkins, she hardly noticed how dark it was getting. 
When she could no longer see, she went to the shelf on the back porch and got the sack of candles she kept for emergencies. If this doesn't get people to come here, we'll have to deliver them all ourselves, she muttered to Esmeralda. There she is on the back porch. Okay. And look what she had done. Wow, that's a lot of jack-o'-lanterns, isn't it? There's the boo one. I see several boo ones. Wow, that would be fun, but tiring. Rebecca Esmeralda peered into the darkness for a long time. She didn't see anything. Still, she watched until finally she saw a light, faint at first, then brighter, and then more lights bobbing through the night. Here they come, she shouted. Esmeralda, let's heat some apple cider. Look at all the people. Wow. Okay. Young and old, everyone in town came. Rebecca Estelle, we thought you hated pumpkins, they said. We saw your jack-o'-lanterns from the end of the road and came for a closer look. I was hoping you would, said Rebecca Estelle. Where did you ever find all these pumpkins, people asked. I came by them quite by accident, Rebecca Estelle said, smiling. Would you like some pumpkin pie? There's plenty. She winked at Esmeralda. Everyone enjoyed the pumpkin pie and cider and had a good time. So did Rebecca Estelle. And when they were ready to go home, she made sure she each carried a jack-o'-lantern, a bag of seeds for roasting, and a pumpkin treat. Rebecca Estelle gave away everything that reminded her of the pumpkins she had always hated. Until, uh -oh. all that remi remained was a handful of seeds. Those she tucked snugly into her pocket where they would be safe until planting time next spring. What was she going to do with those seeds? Put them away and plant them in the spring, wasn't she? Did, at the beginning of the book, she hated pumpkins. But do you think she really did by the end of the book? I don't think so. I think she changed her mind. And by the end of the book, she really liked pumpkins. She liked doing things for others and giving away the pumpkin things. Okay, this book didn't really happen, did it? No, it didn't. But tomorrow we're going to read another book and we're going to see if it's fiction or nonfiction. So until tomorrow, think about pumpkins.